Multiple new developments in the fallout from the Attorney General's summary of Robert Mueller's investigation. Big ones including new reporting that Mr. Mueller told Attorney General Barr three weeks ago he would not reach a conclusion in an obstruction of justice case against the president. That would be left up to Barr. Also tonight, the latest on the efforts by Democrats to make the full Mueller report public, but the Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell late this afternoon blocked a move. So there's that and the reality that we now have key answers to some central tenets of the special counsel's investigation, but a lot of questions remain. The first big answer being this, taken from Attorney General Barr's release, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. Now that is, of course, both legally and politically enormous, insufficient evidence to make a case against the president or people close to him for criminal conspiracy with the Russian government during the 2016 election. Effectively, no collusion, as the president has said all along. At least none that the special counsel believes can be prosecuted. There's good news for the president, arguably better news for the country, that the president of the United States did not criminally conspire with a foreign adversary to get elected. Now, Democrats and those who dislike the president may be disappointed, but for the country, having a president who hasn't conspired with an enemy is certainly very good news. That said, the Barr letter does not say what the president is saying it says. There was no obstruction and none whatsoever. And it was a complete and total exoneration. Well, in fact, the attorney general, who cited very few passages from Robert Mueller's actual report, specifically cited this one with respect to obstruction of justice, quoting now, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Now, those were Mueller's words. According to the attorney general, the special counsel, quote, did not draw a conclusion one way or the other as to whether the examined conduct constituted obstruction. He deferred to the attorney general, who decided, along with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, that it did not, which leaves the question just what did Robert Mueller say about it in the body of his report? Watergate conspirator and former Nixon White House counsel John Dean, certainly no stranger to moments like these, had this to say to Don Lemon last night. We haven't really seen the underlying report, but I have some suspicions of the reason that he boiled this down the way he did is because it's not very attractive, Don. While he didn't find, his words are very different than Barr's, I suspect. He suspects, and so do plenty of Democratic lawmakers, but in truth, we don't know one way or another. Democrats have made releasing the full Mueller report uh, the, uh, to the public their top priority, something the president today said he's also okay with. As it stands, we don't really know the underlying facts that went into the attorney general's decision not to pursue obstruction charges. And on the collusion front, we also don't know if the Mueller investigators reached any determination about why so many people lied so much about their contacts with Russians, Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, George Papadopoulos, all charged with lying. People involved in the Trump Tower meeting with Russians were caught in multiple lies. And we still don't know why, nor do we know if Robert Mueller knows. We still don't have, as CNN political analyst Carl Bernstein often points out, a simple factual account of what happened in all of this. Nor do we know what's behind the president's willingness to give Vladimir Putin the benefit of the doubt time after time on Russia's election interference. Did Robert Mueller have a theory or provide any facts that bear on the question? Again, we don't know, and that should be pointed out. Nor do we know what, if anything, the Mueller investigation uncovered that ties in with or potentially sheds light on any of these other investigations into the president and his dealings. What we do know, however, is that the report, if accurately summarized by the attorney general, dispels some of the harsher allegations against the president by Democrats, by former intelligence officials and others over the years. We have a senator on the program tonight who says he's seen evidence himself of collusion. He said it before the bar summary came out. Tonight, we'll ask him whether he still maintains that. Does the Mueller report contain any evidence that supports the senator's claim, even if it might not rise to the level of criminality? Another unanswered question, as is the president's reaction to it all. When asked today whether the special counsel acted honorably in the investigation, the, pres the president replied, yes, he did. If that's really what he believes, it's certainly a far cry from what he's been claiming for months and months, saying things like this about the special counsel. The problem with the Mueller investigation is everybody's got massive conflicts. Mr. Mueller is highly conflicted. In fact, uh, Comey is like his best friend. These people have the biggest conflicts of interest I've ever seen. I call them the 13 angry Democrats. I could go into conflict after conflict, but sadly, Mr. Mueller is conflicted. Mueller was not Senate confirmed because of all the conflicts. They didn't want to bring him before the Senate because he's very conflicted. He's conflicted. 
And I know that his best friend is Comey, who's a bad cop. He uh, put 13 highly conflicted and, you know, very angry. I call them angry Democrats in. Well, more now on the president's reaction. Seen as Jim Acosta at the White House for us tonight. Has the White House seen the full report yet? According to a White House official I spoke with earlier this evening, Anderson, no, they have not seen the full report. Uh, and as to this, uh, this notion that uh, Robert Mueller, the special counsel, informed the Attorney General William Barr three weeks ago that he would not be bringing an obstruction case, I uh, asked the White House uh, just a short while ago, got an answer to this, uh, and they say uh, the president, the White House, did not know about that, uh, that Mueller informed a bar that he would not be uh, seeking any obstruction charges. And so uh, over here, you know, they seem to be as much in the dark as to what's contained in the full Mueller report as everybody else. And it's in the dark as to whether or not they'll full, uh, push for a full release of that report. We still don't have a straight answer on that. As you were saying a few moments ago, the president said in the Oval Office uh, earlier today, he's he's OK with that idea of releasing the report. Uh, but he's leaving it to the attorney general to decide what ultimately to do about that. In terms of the president declaring full exoneration, obviously the vast majority of the summary was a huge victory for him. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Full stop. Is there any concern about that narrow bit of nuance between Mueller and Barr on obstruction? Not at this point, Anderson. And honestly, they were too busy celebrating today to, to appreciate the nuances of, of just about anything. Uh, I, I will say at, at one point in the driveway of the North Lawn of the White House, I saw uh, the White House counselor, Kellyanne Conway, uh, almost dancing in the driveway as I approached her. Uh, she was beaming. Uh, multiple officials behind the scenes were, were jubilant over this news because they see this cloud being lifted over the president uh, that's been there since the 2016 campaign, Anderson. And, and who can blame them? Uh, that cloud has been there for some time. But as you mentioned just a few moments ago, there are all of these other investigations looming. Uh, the question is how the White House, how the president responds to all of that. Uh, but, but obviously, the question moving forward, you know, is still uh, why is the president why does he have this uh, situation where every time we go out on a foreign trip, uh, he seems to align himself with Vladimir Putin uh, when it comes to this issue of interference in the 2016 election? That obviously is a question that we may have some answers to in the full Mueller report. Uh, it is, it's hard to imagine a situation, Anderson, where the public never gets a full understanding of the answer to that question. But uh, as you were just saying a few moments ago, uh, we just don't know uh, the answer to a lot of questions around here, uh, with uh, the exception of uh, these answers that the president and his team have been desperately seeking for the last two years now. Yeah. Anderson. Jim Acosta, Jim, thanks very much. Just moments ago, yeah. we learned where the top Democrat in Congress stands on all this. CNN's Mano Raju joins us with that. So what more Speaker Pelosi is saying tonight, Mano? Well, Speaker Pelosi had a private meeting with her leadership team just earlier this evening, and she made it pretty clear that she believes the focus of her caucus going forward should not be on the Russia investigation, should not be on the Mueller probe, but should be instead on these economic issues, pocketbook issues, on their agenda. She believes that is how the party should focus on things going forward. It's in line with what she's been saying for some time, but in the aftermath of the Bill Barr letter, she wants to make it pretty clear to her caucus that it makes sense to not focus on the, all the fallout and the messy fallout from this, particularly in light of the finding that the Trump campaign, according to Bob Mueller, he could, could not find, uh, could not establish that the Trump campaign was involved in a conspiracy with the Russian government. Now, I asked Nancy Pelosi about this leaving a meeting earlier this evening, whether she believes there's still collusion, and she didn't want to engage. Speaker Pelosi, are you ready to say that there was no collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia in light of the Mueller finding? Does this exonerate the president? I think that Mueller report was clear the president's not exonerated. So at the end, she said, I think the Mueller report is clear. He was not exonerated. She, we tried to press her a little bit further. Uh, she said, I'm not going to be having a press conference about the soul of our democracy in the hallway of the basement in the Capitol. So it shows you, Anderson, where she wants to put, keep her focus. But still, several of her committees plan to push forward. Of course, they're demanding by next week to provide the report uh, to the House and the Senate. Also, Adam Schiff, the House Intelligence Committee chairman, told me earlier this evening he's still 
plans to investigate Russia interference. He said the criminal investigation that Mueller launched is much different than a counterintelligence investigation that he's launching. He said he still wants to know if Trump has been compromised in any way by the Russians, by financial interests at all. That's going to be still a focus for Adam Schiff. So while Pelosi wants uh, to move forward and in, in, uh, to talk about these issues, at least some of her committees still plan to probe these Russian matters and it's going to probably keep it still in the news, Anderson.